Este eh, vídeo se va, vamos a subirlo a, um, a YouTube y ajá. entonces ya vamos a publicar un artículo en nuestra web y, y luego sí, uh, voy a hacer una, un transcript del, de la entrevista para ajá. que podáis uh, leerlo y todo esto. Uh -huh. okay. Bueno, la, el broadcast ya ha comenzado, entonces vamos a cambiar el idioma. Well, we're going to switch to English now, so we, <laughs> we had a little uh, pre-discussion here and we started uh, the broadcast. So, hi and welcome to cloudwords.net and um, today we have a very interesting discussion going on. Uh, with me today I have a special guest, uh, Jesus Diaz. He uh, works for the Spanish National Cyber, uh, Cyber Security Institute and uh, he dedicates his life, or his professional life at least, <laughs> I don't know what about the personal life, but his professional life he dedicates to uh, uh, f finding out uh, about cybersecurity and what makes um, what, what makes uh, services secure or unsecure. And recently, uh, the cyber um, the National Cyber Institute published a very interesting study comparing um, two. Uh, cloud services uh, made the major cloud services uh, in the market, namely uh, Dropbox with, wow, I guess more than 400 million users by now, and a, an upstarter in the cloud storage space that some of you might have heard of, uh, which is called Mega, and Mega uh, claims to be a very secure service with um, several security mechanisms, private encryption keys, and so on. And Mega offers 50 gigabyte for free. So we're going to have a look at whether you can actually trust that service and which service you choose. But before we really dive into the nitty gritty, I'm just going to hand it over to my guest. Uh, hi, Jesus. How are you doing? Please introduce yourself to our audience. Well, uh, as you said, I'm Jesus Diaz. I work for the um, Spanish uh, Cybersecurity Institute, National Cybersecurity Institute. Uh, we here in the in in CIBE, in CIBE is the, the acronym for short for uh, our name. Uh, we uh, basically um, we are the, the the CERT for Spain, one of the CERTs, the Computer Emergency Response Teams for Spain. Uh, we uh, attend to uh, emergencies that came up in. Uh, cybersecurity related issues in national companies, also for uh, critical infrastructures in collaboration with uh, uh, CENEPIC, the Center of, uh, National Center for uh, Critical Infrastructures. And also we have um, a division, a team for uh, researching and monitoring uh, special relevant technologies in the, in the internet, like, like for instance, uh, the, these uh, cloud services. Uh, so when we realize that some technology is uh, is worth studying in depth, then we, we uh, dedicate some some of our team members and our effort to, to analyze it to see if if uh, it's um, respectful with privacy, if it's mm -hmm. secure, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of technology is it based on, and, and so on. So um, let, me, uh, under, let me just uh, quickly understand that. So you are like an independent institute and uh, companies uh, could come to you and say, hey, we need like a security audit for, for our company well, or... Um, not exactly. We are, uh, we are a, public, a public company, a government company. So mm -hmm. um, uh, we basically at, uh, are at, at, avail, at the avail of the public to, to, to solve... To, to monitor the current technologies uh, to see if there's some problem. Uh, for example, for instance, uh, our, our CERT uh, is constantly receiving um, uh, security incidents. They, mm -hmm. they take care of them. They, they um, advise the, effect, the, 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 the victims of, about how should they proceed to solve, in order to solve the problem and, and so on. And we also yeah, have that, that, that's uh, that, that's very interesting. So, yeah. and how um, how 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 did it come that you yourself uh, are now dedicated to cybersecurity? Maybe you can talk a little bit about your 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 vita. How how did you end up in the in the National Cyber Security Institute? Yeah, well, I I'm having always uh, very interested in cybersecurity. I actually started. Um, more in the academic field, I am almost done with my PhD thesis. I, I hope I defend it uh, in a few weeks. 
So um, I started in the university, and then I, I decided that I, it was worth to to gaze at the um, company world, uh, the, the, to see how companies work, how the not just academic work. So mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, made a, a public call for for new job positions. I applied and I was chosen. I was lucky to chose to work here. Uh, I've been here since uh, for 18 months, I think now. 18. Oh yeah. So, what does a typical day look like in your life? Well, we uh, in my team, we in the team I work in, uh, we are uh, usually at the beginning of the day we. We uh, make a survey of uh, relevant technologies to see if there has been some vulnerability. Some, for instance, uh, IBM, HP, um, I know Cisco. I, we we follow also other relevant certs uh, worldwide. For instance, the, the uh, ICS from the United States, the Critical mm -hmm. Infrastructure. Uh, Center, I, I guess. So, in case we see some some important vulnerability, we create an advisory for that for that uh, specific vulnerability in Spanish mm -hmm. because we 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 are we are the, the since we are one of the official official national certs, we we have to translate everything into Spanish so that national companies can uh, you know hear not everyone speaks English so. <laughs> we have to, to translate this to that, and also yeah. focusing in, in technologies that are relevant for Spain. For Spain, not not perhaps there's a, some product that is uh, very relevant in Germany or in the United States, but not in Spain. So mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. focus in our our market so to speak. So what was the and most <laughs> critical? Um, what was the most critical uh, security hole? The security vulnerability uh, that you've discovered recently, or that you've worked on recently. Well, we, we, we do not uh, actually uh, look for vulnerabilities. We, we try to, to act as a hub. We, mm -hmm. we uh, uh, are constantly monitoring uh, other uh, relevant uh, international companies, with the, the works of other companies, and we, um, we, we, uh, we monitor the, the advisories that they publish. For instance, Microsoft publishes mm -hmm. uh, Every second Tuesday of, the, of each month, publishes uh, a bulletin with with their um, with the patches and the updates that they are going to apply to their systems. So we are uh, we monitor these events and translate them into Spanish, uh, so mm -hmm. that our our uh, people can understand them. And we also are, as I said before, uh, we. We monitor relevant technologies to make reports about them so that people can understand them. How can they uh, make them secure? How can them, for instance, you cannot just uh, take an Apache server and uh, make it run and, and leave it alone. You have to <laughs> properly set it up so that's uh, not accessible from the outside. Uh, you know, all these uh, securing rights. Mm -hmm. I understand. So, uh, how did it come that you actually decided to uh, start uh, a research on cloud storage services, specifically Dropbox? Yes. Well, that's a, a, a nice example of, of all this. Uh, we we realized that uh, well, it was obvious that uh, cloud storage systems were becoming very popular. So uh, we decided that we should we have to to do something about this to to explain to the uh, technical people, uh, but who perhaps are not so very uh, uh, focused in security, what aspects do they have to, to keep in mind in order to in order to um, to use these cloud storage services properly? And, and what are the risks? Uh, what do they do they have to take into account? Um, mm. We chose Dropbox and Mega uh, because of what you said uh, earlier. Because uh, they are the, they are the, the probably one of the uh, Dropbox is almost certainly the, the most widely used service. Mm -hmm. And Mega is also very popular, but uh, the interest was that in that 
uh, mega um, places uh, men, uh, a lot of effort into dealing with privacy and security. So exactly. So this is this is what they advertise. They say, "Hey, we are a 100% secure alternative to to Dropbox." Mm -hmm. um, so normally I would think, hey, I'm using uh, Dropbox as a large company, so I'm just putting myself into a layman's mind here, and I say, hey, I'm using Dropbox, I'm sharing my files, I load, um, I load the files to to Dropbox's servers now, um, and I, I, I just assume that they would take care of protecting my files, uh, but you say this isn't the case, right? Well, they, they certainly do. I mean. Uh... They, I have I, a password at least, so... <laughs> yes, well, that's something that I, I was surprised about. Because you, it's not that your, your password is sent in the clear, it's sent uh, encrypted through uh, SSL or TLS. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what surprised me is that Dropbox actually received, receives the, the password in... in, in they, they can see your password, I mean. Okay, so uh, they, it's in clear, the password. Yes, well, it is, they receive it, even though it's transmitted uh, and encrypted. Uh, I mean, uh, let me explain this. They use uh, a, a, mm -hmm. a very basic method for protecting passwords is to apply a cryptographic hash function, a one-way hash function. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of just sending uh, over the wire uh, encrypted, encrypted with SSL, that's... Uh, Instead of sending your, your password just by itself, you apply a hash function and then send this hash, mm -hmm. hash function, also encrypted with, with SSL. But at least mm -hmm. uh, that's um, a way for um, uh, preventing the company or the, the other side of the communication from learning your, your password. Mm -hmm. right, so technically, somebody if they if they transfer the data in cl in the clear, somebody could, uh, if I understand you correctly, could intercept um, this connection somehow and and get to my password. Well, no, no uh, not uh, someone external to Dropbox, uh, mm -hmm. because they have uh, proper cryptographic uh, means to protect the communications. But uh, it seems that Dropbox does have access to your password. However, they, they claim that only uh, a very few number of, of employees have have access to, for instance, to users' data. I mean, I suppose that that includes their passwords. And obviously, uh, they I'm, I'm sure of it that they store the passwords uh, uh, securely, uh, encrypted or hashed, hashed or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. However, we, we from the client perspective, we cannot we we cannot uh, verify that. They they say mm -hmm. they do so, so they probably do so, because otherwise it's so. Let, let's let's just let's try to let, let's try to to break uh, Dropbox encryption down uh, a little bit. So first, um, I I download the Dropbox client, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Then I choose a password, and uh, that password is um is 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 somehow en encrypted that only mm -hmm. Dropbox. Uh, Basically, can 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 encrypt theoretically only a few people in their in their office. This is at least what they claim. And uh -huh. then my data is encrypted uh, via via transit with SSL or T TLS. And then again on a Dropbox's servers. I believe they use Amazon servers, but I mean there is uh, certainly some some encryption in place. Am I getting you right here? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay, so um, there is, but before my data leaves. The computer, there is no encryption in place when using Dropbox, uh, and this uh, is... the, 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 yeah. the data, the files themselves are encrypted also with with SSL. But uh, mm -hmm. this encryption, of course, takes place in your in your computer. But mm -hmm. uh, they also receive. Uh, it's the same case than, than like uh, like with the password. Uh, they, even though the, the information is is sent encrypted. They have access to the plain data, mm -hmm. to the plain text. But it's only possible. It's only possible for them theoretically to access my data. So no third party could go in and no. and get to my data that easily. No. Okay, that's that's at least the good good news. Um, what uh, what what can what can a user do to make um, 
Dropbox because, I mean, there are so many people using this service. What can a user do? Or what can I do um, to make uh, my files more secure when I'm using um, Dropbox? Uh, well, the, the, the most obvious uh, way is to encrypt, that, uh, encrypt uh, your files your files yourself. To uh, choose mm -hmm. one software of your preference, for instance, uh, GPG or PGP, and mm -hmm. encrypt the files and then upload them to Dropbox. However, that's probably out of the reach of the normal user. So yeah, probably. And it's not uh, yeah, isn't it also um, making, uh, or isn't isn't this also making the the convenience obsolete? So when when I'm having to encrypt files, is the synchronization process going to work as expected? Can I can I share files um, as I would normally yeah, well, do with others? Can other people somehow open the files? Um, could you shed a little bit of light onto that subject? You would have to to. Uh, to share the, the cryptographic keys also, or, or the passwords you use to encrypt them, the, your files. So you couldn't just uh, encrypt your file, upload it to, to Dropbox, and share the, the file with other people, and nothing else more. You, you would have to, to take uh, your key or your password, the, the password that you used, to, you used to encrypt that file, and uh, communicate it uh, to whoever you want to, to share your file so that uh, the recipient uh, can also decrypt the, the file one, mm -hmm. once he has I understand, one. yeah. However, and yeah, yeah co continue. I think that one, one important uh, subject to keep in mind is uh, what are you going to, to use Dropbox or whatever, for instance, uh, if you are just going to use it for uh, your, I don't know, not, not unsensitive data, then mm -hmm. it's perfectly OK. I mean, that's up to which one. If you are going exactly. to upload very uh, very sensitive information, then mm -hmm. I would probably think twice. <laughs> Yeah, so you should definitely uh, separate between like the personal, the personal files and uh, business files. So business files are technically more, more sensitive. So if you have any account information uh, pa or passwords or anything cru crucial to your business, you would rather encrypt it before uploading it to Dropbox, or you wouldn't use Dropbox altogether because there I, is uh, this, um, well. I haven't evaluated the, the Dropbox for companies. I, I know that Dropbox has different offers for, for uh, enterprises and for companies. And I don't mm -hmm. know how, what methods do they, they apply or or uh, what uh, different uh, features do they provide. So uh, for Dropbox for companies, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know how, how it works. I suppose mm -hmm. that the basics are the same, but the details I uh, am not aware of them. Yeah. Yeah, and there's another company uh, which is called uh, well, very similarly, uh, Box, uh, which is more aimed towards businesses, and they have they have pretty much uh, addressed uh, this issue just recently in that they um, they released like a sort sort of private uh, encryption key for company files. So actually, when you're using Box now, um, you can now uh, encrypt your files prior to uploading them to to Box. And uh, I'm not sure how Dropbox is going to react onto that fact, but I guess, especially for business users, they must address this encryption issue uh, in some day. What do you think? Yeah, I suppose. To, I suppose so. I don't know the, the specifics of this box that you mentioned, but mm -hmm. probably, in my opinion, uh, it's today people is becoming more concerned about security and privacy, uh, even normal users, not just uh, security professionals. And uh, this uh, box, and for instance, the, the, pri the, the policy that Mega has with respect to security, I think that it's going to, to uh, make other companies to take security more seriously. And mm -hmm. uh, Dropbox has done so in the, in the past also. For instance, they, a few years ago, they uh, supported the, the duplication, which is another important uh, Property to take in, to, to to consider when when analyzing uh, storage service, cloud storage services. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a research by some scientists. Uh, I don't remember the 
the names right now, but um, we can put it in the show notes later. Don't worry. What? We can put it in the show notes later uh, if you if you think about the names later. Okay. Uh, so they, they basically find out a way to because th this deduplication what it does is if if the server uh, finds out that the information that you are uploading already exists in their in their systems they mm. uh, do not upload it again they just uh, yeah, sure. hey I I, know, I, ha I already have this information uh, I'm just going mm. to make a reference to it uh, instead of upload uploading it again. So uh, these researchers um, find out a way to, to exploit, the, to take advantage of, of this uh, working mode in order to, to detect if some file already existed, existed in the, in the mm -hmm. system. So, I mean, it's a very general uh, and hard to, to exploit uh, property, but it's, it's still possible. So mm -hmm. uh, Dropbox, uh, after this, uh, after this was found out, they uh, they uh, they fixed it. They, they they changed that working mode so that now this the duplications occur, but only for uh, files that uh, a single user that that I have. If if I am uploading a, a chunk, mm -hmm. a, a block of, of information that I already have, it's not going mm -hmm. to be uploaded. But it Again, doesn't look it's good. Saves it's saves bandwidth. Yeah, it's, now it's, it's, it's safer. It's how it should be. Yeah. yeah. OK, so how now let's now? switch uh, to Mega. Um, how, how is Mega different in, uh, in, in terms of security, in terms of uploading files? Um, how does Mega treat my files differently? Uh, well, I think the, the most important uh, property is that uh, unless you uh, Publicize it. Otherwise, Mega doesn't have access to your to your content. They they are just not able to to uh, say what kind of information are you uploading, uh, mm -hmm. because it's always encrypted in your computer with a key that you set that you establish. So they they don't uh, have access to that key. They don't have access to and, and since they don't have access to that key, they cannot decrypt your information. And how did Mega how did Mega solve the the uh, deduplication um, issue? Uh, they apply deduplication, but on encrypted data. Mm -hmm. So and, and this is this is actually possible if you have like total gibberish, um, and then you apply deduplication. So how does the, uh, this algorithm has to be very smart to uh, actually figure figure out how this works, right? It's not. Uh, it's, it's really it's very. Unlikely that it happens by chance. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have you have one file and you encrypt it with your own key and upload it. And if I have another file encrypted with another different key and upload it, it's uh, practically impossible that they they uh, they collide. So mm -hmm. uh, they, for instance, they do the, this the duplication when if you share a file with me, uh, then because you are sharing it directly with me, they, they know that instead of uh, making my my uh, uh, my space to hold a, a complete copy of your data, they just uh, make a reference to your to your information. Okay. Okay. But just that's just for the case of of, of sharing. If if someone is sharing directly with another person uh, a specific file or Mm -hmm. So, and how how can you actually is there is there any way for me um, for a user to know whether a cloud storage service is really secure? So let's suppose I don't want to use Dropbox, I don't want to use Mega. Um, I've read uh, on some blog that there is some other great cloud storage service. Is there is there any tool that I can use as a user to to assess uh, if a service is really secure or not? Well, uh, to do it uh, automatically, I think it's, I don't know of, a, of, a, of any tool that does it automatically. And that was the, purpose, the, the, the main purpose of our, of our study. Uh, we chose Dropbox and Mega because they are popular, but mm -hmm. 
what we actually wanted is to to provide a framework so that anyone who wants to evaluate uh, a cloud service can can take it, can take our, our study and say, well, I have to, to think about encryption, I have to think about authentication, I have to think about uh, how they deal with passwords, about how they store the, the information in their servers, uh, mm. whether or not they use the duplication and, and all, all the, the the properties that are uh, studied in our in our report. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and you're using yeah. several software tools where you like um, analyze the which which connection is established by the service provider, how the passwords are transmitted, if they are encrypted, how the deduplication works. So uh, anybody who's really interested into how uh, Mega and Dropbox uh, work and how they encrypt files or not encrypt files for that matter and which uh, keys uh, are used, uh, you can really read the report for free. I think it's available for free, right? So anybody can, anybody can read uh, the report on your website, and we will obviously leave a link to the study um, in the video description below here. Um, is there any um, is there any final recommendation that you can uh, that you can tell people um, with regards to cl cloud security? Um, is it is it secure to upload files uh, to the cloud, or um, how can how can uh, how can one actually be even more secure? Is it just like okay, I have to encrypt my files, or is there something else that one can that one can do? I think that the most important thing to subject to keep in mind is to be uh, logical with. What do you want to do with the information that you are uploading? Uh, but not just for, for cloud storage, for everything in the internet. If mm. you have some piece of information that it's highly sensitive, uh, personal information or, or corporate, uh, secret or whatever, I just uh, wouldn't upload it to the internet. I would, uh, I would keep it uh, separate copies in my hard drive or uh, pen drive or whatever, but if it's, it's highly sensitive, sensitive uh, I wouldn't upload it to the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's information that uh, the risk of, of uh, losing control of it uh, is uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's acceptable, then yes, it's OK. Uh, you want to, to upload a, I don't know, a document you are sharing with another colleagues for for a project that you have, you are working on, or a video, a, a picture of your family, or whatever, I see no problem. And, and for that matter, uh, even um, the security uh, kind of takes uh, a second place. I mean, obviously, it's, 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 it's important to have security. But since you are assuming that uh, your information is not highly sensitive, then uh, mm -hmm. it's important to... I understand. To so, and on a personal note, do you use cloud storage cloud services? Storage. Do you upload your files to the internet? I mean, you know so much about all the, the nitty-gritty details about encryption and security. Do you, do you trust, with some of your files at least, uh, to upload them to the cloud? Yes, yes, I, I use it, for instance, for, for this example I, I, I said, for sharing pictures with my friends. I, I upload it I, uh, so that I can uh, share the, the links to, with them mm -hmm. for, for big, uh, for big uh, uh, files that uh, are just uh, very cumbersome to, to upload it, in a, uh, to send it via email, for instance. Or when I go to a, to a conference, I always, as a backup, I upload my, my slides so that if my, pen drive, if my pen drive fails, I also have access to to a copy in the uh, in the internet, but for for sensitive information, I don't use cloud. So I'll you're using like the traditional like external the hard drives and carry the files with you, and uh, you're not using the cloud basically. Yeah. No, I, I usually have several copies in my personal computer, uh, in my pen drive, in my laptop, uh, in an external hard drive. But for for sensitive information, I don't. But yes, I, I am. I am a bit. Uh, yeah, how do you say it? Um, You're overly concerned. You are. are yeah, re stops. really deep into the into the topic, and you know a lot about it. Yeah, sure. So you're really sensitive about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, Jesus, uh, thank you very much um, for, for the insights into the security aspects of cloud storage and the two major services, Dropbox and Mega. Uh, when people want to find out more uh, about you, about your work, uh, where can they go? Uh, well, I don't actually have a personal website. I use Twitter, uh, Jesus Diaz Pico is my, my mm -hmm. name and surname. And also, uh, I usually post, uh, make post, uh, blog posts in, in Cibe, as, uh, yeah. as do, uh, similarly as other of my colleagues. We have a blog where we, uh, usually twice a week, we, we make entries about whatever things we consider uh, relevant in Spanish and in, in English, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's probably a good place to, to, to follow us. And, uh, okay, that's, that's great. great. And uh, if you have, uh, if you guys have any questions uh, regarding the topics we we've dis discussed or cloud storage security, you can of course uh, leave comments below this video, below the post where we publish the video. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, Jesus will also answer a couple of the questions that you guys have. <laughs> okay, so. I'm um, just going to stop the broadcast, and thank you very much for listening.